look glad you're all here. This is great. We got a nice crowd today. Thank you all. So um, I want to let everyone know that Susan's show is up till February 19th uh, at the Lake George Arts Projects Courthouse Gallery. For the month of January, we are going to be open by appointment only. Uh, we just want to see how things pan out for um, with everything that's going on with COVID. Um, hopefully by February, things might change a little bit just to get, you know, make it a little safer for everybody. So um, we just need a 24 hour notice. Um, so if you want to, and even if you want to come on a Tuesday, our regular gallery hours are Wednesday through Saturday, uh, Wednesday through Friday, 12 to five and Saturday, 12 to four. Um, but if you wanted to come on a Tuesday, you can make an appointment, you know, I'll come meet you there or Tanya, um, one of, one of us will be able to meet you there. And the phone number's on our website. The other thing I wanna let everyone know is on our website, if you go to the exhibition page for Susan's show, it's pretty easy to navigate from the homepage. Um, you'll see there that we have uh, all of the, if you, don't, if you don't make it to the show or you don't feel safe going, or if you wanna get a, just look at stuff again after you've seen it or or look at it after this talk. Um, we have all of the images in the show are, are there. And we've also included um, some little excerpts that Susan has written or the people in those store in the paintings have oh. written. And it's really, um, it's nice to see who those people are and what their background, a little bit about their story. So um, what else am I leaving out here? Um, also, there's a checklist if you'd like to purchase anything. We also have a checklist of the works for sale um, and some other links. And we'll have a link to this recording. Uh, we also will have a link to uh, Look TV came the other day and um, talked to Susan in the gallery. And that was fun. So we'll have a link to that when they um, get that going probably in a week or two. So welcome, Susan. <laughs> Your show looks so good. Um, I'm going to go into the screen share and just show everyone what the what Susan's work looks like in the gallery. Oh, nice. Some of you that were here early already saw this, but um, there are 21 paintings in the show. And you can see they range in size from <clears throat> I think 16 by 20, Susan, and the largest one is 36 by 48. Right, and that would be the one on the left. Yes. It's a big painting. And they're very intricate. There's so much going on in, in, in all of them. So Susan, you're, 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 oops, sorry everybody. Laura's still getting used to screen share. Okay, back to there, okay. Um, Susan, you know just about everybody in these, these paintings. Yes. Yeah, they're friends, family, neighbors. Um, one of the things that when we were putting the show together, we talked about, you know, as a painter, you spend a lot of time alone. You have to, that's just a painter's life. You're in your studio, you work alone. Um, and you have found a way to work alone and stay connected to people. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? So, um... When my husband and I moved to the Essex County, to the Adirondack Park it, permanently in 2009, um, I just felt very isolated. And so I thought, well, you know, I could keep doing what I was doing when I lived in the Albany area, uh, mm -hmm. which was, you know, very personal work, working with dream imagery, which I enjoyed, mm -hmm. but I thought, why not, you know, we've experienced a change, why not take a, a risk, take a chance and change what I was doing? And I thought, you know, I was lonely um, and I felt very isolated. You know, I was drawn to the Adirondack Park because of the solitude, because of the mountains and the, the uh, landscape, but I was very surprised you know, how much I wanted to, with what, with how much I really wanted to meet my neighbors and, um, and get to know the students in, in my classes better. Um, and so I, 
I, as I just had conversations with them um, and began to get to know them better, I thought, well, I would like to paint these stories. They're very interesting stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I, you know, you've been showing um, in the area for, for quite a while, and I've watched your work change over the years. I've always loved your work. One thing I've noticed um, that in these paintings and most of your work, um, you, oh, you have this, you're drawn to the, the light, the quality of light in a room, um, how it falls on objects, on people, and I gotta say, like, I hope that um, you, everybody can see this show because seeing it on the screen is one thing, they look great, but seeing them in person, there is such a shimmer to the work. Um, it's, you know, you're, it's how you're painting light on these wood panels. Um, but when I was lighting them in the gallery, I mean, they really have a glow to them, um, which is just beautiful. <laughs> And you can't tell from the computer screen, I don't think, there's such a thick texture. When you get close to these things, it's, a, it's a, like an impasto uh, surface. It, 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 just speaking of light, I mean, as we go through these, I'll flip through a couple, but you can see the light coming through windows, you know, the way light, well, especially this is a portrait of a, a painting of your um, parents. Yes. And, and you're using light in some of these, well, actually in all of your work, you have these tricks and things that you do, like a Renaissance painter where you, um, you're, the light is illuminating the subject in a certain way. And it's part of the story. Um, I think one that's pretty, it's obvious to me is this painting of, um, this woman is a uh, wildlife rehabilitator somebody who I actually know, <laughs> which is kind of neat. Um, small world in the Adirondacks, right? Uh, but she's a turtle, a wildlife rehabilitator who focuses on turtles. And notice there's like a halo in her, her, she has a trailer in her backyard where she is trying to save these turtles. But Susan has composed this painting like, uh, you know, part of the story is, you know, she's saving the turtle. She's like Saint Debbie, the yeah. turtle, patron saint of turtles, right? Yes. <laughs> so I became interested in light as a high school uh, drawing and painting teacher um, because I, I noticed um, that if students were really focusing on the light and the shadow, they began to move from just working with value and contrast to really looking and beginning to render form. And it was, it slowed them down. Um, also, the notion of the shifting light, uh, just being open to that and then continuing to, to work on a drawing. Um, you know, the, the, um, the sense of just being open to change mm -hmm. uh, was really important. And then I, I um, of course, I'm interested in that as well in my own work. I didn't think that they could handle that. It was something that I liked, mm -hmm. uh, but um, they handled it marvel you know, very, very well. Right. Um, and then, of course, is the notion of metaphor. And so for me, light is illumination it's inviting the viewer to pay close attention you know something special is happening here um is really what i'm inviting the viewer you know right. to to engage with you know the subject in that way and using the thick paint well that's just really about enjoying the process of painting pushing paint around watching you know what happens when colors mix, right. the, the surface of the form, uh, building and destroying, you know, different areas. Right. Uh, so that's, that's another that's one that I thought the lighting in this one was unique as well. You know, the, it's actually the, the computer screen, which we can't see, is lighting their faces. 
and um, this is a beautiful painting. Um, and uh, my niece and my nephew, and um, she has a pre existing condition, and this was at a time when the health care debate was being discussed, you know, was, was going on in Congress. And, you know, she was 17 at the time and they were super worried. That's her twin brother. Oh. So uh, the other thing that the work does is it traces sort of our, our, our experiences, our shared experiences as a culture since about 19, uh, since about 2016. Mm -hmm. so right. Yeah, most of this work is, is uh, very recent. Um, yes. It's either from the last, I mean, I think the oldest one is probably four years old. Uh, yeah. but, but there's a, um, some paintings that are um, addressing what we've all been living through in 2020, the, you know, mm -hmm. the time of COVID. And this is, um, based on that first day when we all didn't, you know, March 13th, we didn't really know what was coming. Um, this is the largest piece in the, in the show. And um, this, is, this is an incredible piece. The, the, the amount of detail, the pattern in the rug, the books, you know, the, there's a mask. We talked about this earlier, um, how you will take- Watching you move your hands around. Oops, somebody's gotta mute themselves. Maybe Tanya will get that. Um, but the um, the mask wearing didn't really like kick in until late, later in the summer or late summer. Or, I mean, some people were, but you know, early in March, you know, but you will take elements that you'll add to the, you take a lot of photographs, like yeah. you take up to a hundred photographs as reference. And then later you'll add um, some elements to to, to the painting, to the composition. So you, do you wanna talk about um, what's... Sure, yeah. So each painting is a result of not just one conversation, but multiple conversations over time with you know, the, the people that I'm painting. You know, this of course is my husband, Bruce, and my mother. And um, I really wanted to just make a painting about how shocking it was to, you know, for Bruce and I to be told that on Friday the 13th that we were done, no more school. Maybe we would come back in a couple of weeks or a month, but probably not. And to go home and just prepare for everything being online. It was, it was just stunning. Also, the way it was presented to us was, you know, don't touch your face, don't touch anything in the room. Um, you know, we don't know how this is spread. Um, stay away from each other. Um, it was actually very frightening, yeah. you know, for, for so many of us. This painting took four months. And during that time, you know, we were checking email, we were listening to our governor um, we were listening to Dr. Fauci and we were learning, um, well, maybe masks are a good idea, you know, and then it was, yes, we must wear masks and maybe it's not so much about what we touch, just wash your hands. Um, it's just be careful, uh, breathing, you know, uh, close to each other. And Ventilation, so, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so for me, the a painting, this painting, you know, all painting, it's, it's not just literal, it's, it's transformative. You know, it, it really, this painting shows the transformation as well of ideas mm -hmm. um, about COVID mm -hmm. over time. So the contrast between the date and these masks, um, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the notion that, you, you know, you notice that, yeah. that's important yeah. to me because truth is in, right, mm -hmm. the detail right. oftentimes, especially understanding the metaphor, yeah. know, not making it so literal, you know. It's, um, it's all part of the story. It's all part of every story. Here's, we, an, here's another um, 
I, I just wanted to, there's another COVID painting. Mm -hmm. um, this was a colleague of yours, I think. Yes, Summer. She's a young teacher. Um, can I talk about this a little bit? I, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. So this is, I don't want to, um, so Summer is a colleague of, of mine and um, she teaches English. She's a young teacher, a very, very good teacher. And um, she has huge college loans. You know, she's in her 30s and like most people in their, in their 30s, you know, they're going to be paying for a long time. And when we, this college went online, she lost a little over one third of her income because of reduced classes. Um, she was also teaching in the prison. Um, you know, she, she wasn't going to get her travel money. Um, and it, it became very difficult for her. Mm -hmm. She was unable to stay in her apartment. She had rented an apartment in town. She moved home. Then she moved home again. Uh, then she moved again. Then she moved again. Um, she, she really, really struggled. And, um, you know, she said to me once, you know, Susan, this, this didn't have to be this bad. And I thought, you know, Summer, you're right. You're right. It didn't have to be this bad. I am so sorry. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, it was a profound yeah. moment for me to, well, for her to reach out to me and, and tell me how yeah. it was for her. But it was also for me, um, profound to realize, you know, yeah. how this young, vibrant, very um, devoted teacher mm -hmm. was, was really struggling. Yeah. With, with being alone. Right. As well as um, just not being able to provide for herself. Yeah. And pay her loans. Yeah. So she was, she said she was using her charge card. Yeah. You know, for, for probably four or five months. Yeah. So, so there's, yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, the story as, you know, there's a lot going on in these paintings. And these stories are, um, I'm just gonna try to get some, some other images in here because they're all really powerful images. Um, and there's so much about the time that we live in. I'm, I'm amazed at how much work you've been able to do. Um, the, the last two paintings in this one, I mean, this is all you know recent work. Um, this is just a gorgeous painting, the way the light's coming through the room. And when you see it in real life, I mean, getting close to it, again, that surface, it's such a rich surface. Um, but can you tell us about the title of this one and um, what's happening here? So this, this is my husband, Bruce, and we, when COVID happened um, to us, we knew that we weren't suffering in the same way that, for example, Summer was mm -hmm. suffering. And um, we, we were watching long lines on television, people, the, the food lines, mm -hmm. and just, you know, listening to podcasts. And we just, it was just heartbreaking. And you know, at, here in this painting, um, I kept Bruce. I captured Bruce um, making breakfast one mm -hmm. morning, chopping fruit for a, a really lovely breakfast. You know, and um, there's the Buddha is off to the side. You know, and oh, yeah. I tried to create this sense of um, that we were talking a lot of just being present with each other. COVID was an adjustment for a lot of couples. Um, mm -hmm. And we were, we were j just talking about, well, you know, we have breakfast. A lot of people don't. What can we do? Mm -hmm. um, and, and why is it that we're okay and others aren't okay? Mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. Bruce has a salary. Um, and 
that didn't change. Um, yeah. This painting was really about how we have had many conversations about our privilege and what do you do with privilege? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, we began um, donating, um, sharing, reaching out, checking in with our neighbors and friends. And um, this is a, another one of those moments, those COVID moments right. that, that were very memorable to us yeah. both. I'm going to um, switch to another one now. Um, one of the things that I, I notice in your work, I mean, you, you don't usually have more than two people. Um, you know, the, you're, you're capturing this interior, these rooms where the light is filling and, but there's, there are a lot of the figures, solitary figures, many of them. And they are usually, there's some kind of, there's an iPad or a iPhone or a, or a smartphone or, um, computer. Um, and I know that that's something uh, you've talked about, just the living in an isolated place in the Adirondacks and um, how we connect to the world. Yes. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Because I thought that was interesting to hear how you've, you know, decided to create these paintings and compositions with, with that in mind, how, how we connect. So I think one of the struggles of, for those living in an isolated area, such as the Adirondack Park, is feeling connection, connected to broader issues, global issues. You know, um, and so the way we all do this is through our computers, through the internet. Right. Um, and so I know that there's a lot of criticism of social media and online um, newspapers and, and that sort of thing. But I think for those that really make an effort to stay informed and to check the facts and to rely on reliable sources, um, you know, don't get caught up in, you know, uh, sort of ideology, the ideology of one particular uh, site, for example. Mm -hmm. it, it's a way to really um, feel connected to the broader culture. And my son, uh, Matthew, often would um, scour the internet each morning and just try to make sense of the news that day. And he was always fact checking. Mm -hmm. um, he, he um, thought that if you could just know and research a couple of things each day, that it, you had a chance at, at being informed. Mm -hmm. And so right. that was the title for, for that painting. For the six things. And then I just pulled up fact checking because that's another, mm -hmm. um, yeah. another painting in, the, in that line of thinking. And um, again, the you know, the way the light pours in the room, I always just notice how you handle light. It's just amazing. Um, and again, these, this paint, the surface is so rich. You have a number of cats in these video, in these videos, in these paintings. Do you have a cat? We had, two, we had two cats. We had, we um, had Smudge and um, we have Dude. And mm -hmm. so they were always photobombing. Yeah. <laughs> So I, and sometimes if they didn't, I would just paint them in. Yeah, there you go. Right. Just paint the yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, here's a, another painting. I love the light in this one. I think there's a cat in this one. The cat is on the bed. Yes. In the mirror. Yeah. Um, and there's a story. This. Can you say something about the story for? Um, these are your neighbors, I believe. No, this is, uh, these are friends from the AP reading that some of the people from the AP reading that I do uh, mm -hmm. every summer are, are here, are in this painting. Um, and Larry and Jan actually uh, spend time uh, vacationing 
in the Adirondack Park. And on one of their visits, um, I invited them to um, uh, pose. Uh, I really was very intrigued by Larry's story. Um, his grandfather was lynched in Alabama and he was really um, talked a lot about it and how it was um, terrifying for him just to know that. And so this was at a time when he was really concerned about racism, you know, uh, starting in about 2016, mm -hmm. um, just being so out in the open that it was okay to be racist. Yeah. Um, and I just um, wanted to paint this lovely couple and yeah. as a tribute to um, who they were yeah. and what they stood for. You know, they've been married for over 30 years yeah. and they both teach art. And um, you know, it was important for Larry to speak truth. It's, it's important for Larry that we all speak truth to power. Yep. Yeah. He says, I can't do this alone. Right. I'm sorry, I skipped, I went, I want to make, we have so many paintings, I wanted to um, try to get in as many as I could. Um, and again, everybody knows they're, they're on our website, you can um, see them with a little bit of the story. Um, this is another, this is one of the larger ones in the show. And I just love the way you compose people in these rooms, you know? I mean, so, you know, you're, can you say a little bit about the photographing? I mean, you, so you take a lot of photographs. And I take a lot of photographs and, um, you know, I'll, I'll go in and I'll say to, you know, so, so, so everything really starts with a conversation over time that just, it's just not once, it's maybe five or six times over several months. And so we start with the, the person that, you know, we, in our conversation, talking about what do you wanna say? Um, what titles are you thinking of? What would, objects would you like to include? Mm -hmm. And so we start with, with that and not really knowing. Mm -hmm. um, where it's going just uh so i take multiple images photographs you know 30 40 50 um standing up sitting down with one type of light with another type of light and then we the the sitter and i have conversations well yeah this is closer to my story this is more like i want what i want to say and then we'll go back in or i'll go back in with my camera my little a phone or my iPad and I'll take oh, many more. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just leave it there. And then I will go back to my studio and start taking parts of some photographs and parts of other photographs and piecing things together. Mm -hmm. I might, for example, in this one, I remember tipping the couch at an angle a little bit more than what was presented. Mm -hmm. um, tipping the, the table mm -hmm. at, a, at a different angle, just conscious of, you know, moving the eye from the foreground to the background um, and creating a sense of deep space. Sometimes the light is invented based on what I know about just refraction, mm -hmm. uh, umbras and penumbras. I was always very interested in science um, as a as a kid in physics, you know, in high school and Oops, sorry, and, you know, the artist ha has to know, mm -hmm. I, or at least for me, I had to know yeah. a little bit about those sorts of things. Yep, and the part you know, of the theory of light that light, you know, on a long plane graduates it, and it's soft, you mm -hmm. know, versus refraction when light is blocked. Mm -hmm. So often times um, those is science as well as the, the stories of the person that informs me. 
you know, um, and, and chemistry, of course, mm -hmm. understanding color and um, why some colors move forward and some sit back. Right. How to create depth. So there's, there's always a lot going yeah. on. But so the painting takes, takes a long time. Both yeah. the planning and as well as the building. And once it's all set, when I have an idea, like a good feeling, you know, right. um, then I just, I just start. Yeah. And you know, often people ask artists, you know, how long did it take you to do that? And, you know, everything that you just said is part of your, your life as a painter. And so a real good answer, I think, when someone asks that question, and it's not to be snarky, it takes you all your life up until now because you learn all these things about chemistry, about light, about what happens when I do this with paint or what happens or, you know, how, and how do you tilt a couch? You know, you've been drawing and painting your whole life. Mm -hmm. So you've learned how to do these things. You didn't just magically boom. I know how, you know, you, you know, you're a, a dedicated, very disciplined painter. Um, and there's a lot going on in all of these paintings. Um, let me, I wanna pull up, oh, I have a recent painting, your, the painting that you just finished. Uh, this is a beautiful painting. Um, and this woman's hands, I just, when, I'm stand, when I was standing in front of this painting, I could not take my eyes off of her hands. I mean, they're just beautifully painted. Um, but her face, you know, and the light hitting her, there's a cat in there too. <laughs> Do you want to say something about this woman or this paint, her story? So um, one of the very first books I read when I was a child was the diary of Anne Frank or memorable books. And I remember thinking, what if something like that happened again? And I had to hide, you know, and um, I really, um, I never forgot um, that book. And I, with all of the anti-Semitism that I'm reading about, the neo-Nazi uh, groups, for example, yeah. um, and bad boys, I just, it, it just broke my heart, you know, to, to imagine that here we are again doing this. And so this woman, her name is, her name is, is Danka. Uh, she calls herself Dana now, um, was a young child, seven or eight years old. Um, and because she was Jewish, she wasn't even a practicing Jewish person, but because she, you know, lived in Poland and she was Jewish, um, she, uh, she and her family were sent to the ghetto. And her story is a story of escape from the ghetto. Her, her father died in the Holocaust. Um, so she's wearing the, the so, so I knew of her, um, that she lived in our community. She's a chemical biologist and was in her, when, in her career and um, everybody knew her. And I just called her and said, hey, can I paint your, your, your story and I visit, visited her twice and each time just got to know her for, um, for long periods I visited her and learned that she wrote a book, learned about her opinions, learned how um, about what's going on, learned how she was suffering, um, uh, listening to and seeing these neo-Nazi symbols um, the, the recent um, attack on Congress, the mob attack on Congress was especially painful, you know, for her. So you've talked to her since that happened? Yes. Yeah. And so she, well, actually not. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, well, every day there's something in this country. So something. <laughs> even before that, you know, it was crazy. So, oh, so I, I painted her hands, you know, because in that way, you just speak, you know, to, just to show her strength, um, her long life, her resilience, 
-hmm. and her resolve, you know, she said to me, you know, never again, once was enough. Mm -hmm. And um, so she's wonderful. And mm -hmm. she wrote a book called My Nine Lies. It's a beautiful story. Um, I actually read the book um, while I was painting this. And so that's why I put our cat, um, dude, <laughs> in, <laughs> in the painting. And it looks like a cat litter containers in the back too. Exactly. Yeah. But, but I, I, tr I thought, you know, part of painting D Dana in these dark shadows, mm -hmm. you know, was, you know, part of like reading her, her book about how everything was in, sh you know, dark and mm -hmm. grimy and dirty and mm -hmm. um in the warsaw ghetto and yeah. she was always hidden out of daylight as a child wow. it had a profound impact on her so there's always symbolism i added that's my mother's tablecloth mm -hmm. um to sh to show um dana's secular um it sort of views you know that as a scientist, as a chemist. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to not just have them, you know, the Jewish symbol, but also the, the stars, the symbol of the stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a gorgeous painting. So I'm gonna show one more and then I'm gonna go over to the chat room just to alert everyone. If you want to ask Susan a question, um, we will, uh, write it in the chat section on your controls. You can see the chat button and um, type out your question there and we'll get to it. But I just want to go to this painting. This is another gorgeous painting. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of neat to see this couch show up in a lot of paintings. This, uh, this is the, sa is this the same couch that your son was? Yes. On, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's in a lot of your paintings. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just mentioning the couch because if you see this painting live, just the texture, you know, the, you know, you get close to some of um, these paintings and, it, you know, there's such abstraction and, you know, the way things are done. I mean, no, I don't know anybody who paints like you. It's just, your paintings are so interesting. And, and then on top of that, we have um, the subject matter. So this is a painting of your dad. Yes. And he, um, this was, I took these, these photos of him, uh, several photos of him. It was uh, just before he died, a couple of weeks before he died. And, um, you know, he was, um, he was a man of strong opinion. He had signed up to serve in World War II at 17. He was uh, in the Navy. And um, he was a radio man and um, a simple, humble man in some ways. Um, just was his proudest moments were serving in the Navy. Um, and he had very strong progressive views um, about how we need to smarten up, he would say and and vote you know to, for our, the benefit of not just us but others mm -hmm. and you know he um, said would say things like we've all benefited from for example um, social security and medicare you know he believed we should extend that to uh, pre-tuition for college um, or healthcare, universal healthcare for all. And his idea was that why do we fight that which would benefit everyone? Why do, is it like a zero sum game where if we share that mm -hmm. somebody is, um, you know, going to lose. Right. And so I just, um, but you know, I feel like you, the way you present him, just on the couch and um, the angle, mm -hmm. and the way you know his again, his hands are so expressive, yeah. and his look. 
I can almost hear him talking. <laughs> you know? um, so that's a really neat painting. I mean, it's a beautiful painting. I'm gonna stop my share just so I can take a look over at the chat room. I'm just going to close this and then go to chat. Oops, um, uh-oh, where's the chat? Sorry, folks, bear with me for a second. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of questions here. Okay. Okay, so, ooh, um, let's see. Happy birthday, is it your birthday? Me? No. No, oh. Laura, that, this is Tanya. I sent that to Sam. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to send it to Sam. I accidentally sent it to you. Oh. All the questions are underneath that. <laughs> Sam's birthday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um somebody said sorry may i come back i don't know did somebody get kicked out by by mistake tanya i'm gonna have you look in, into that i don't know um Rick says that she loves the cats and uh, kathleen says the dog is next i know you and bruce just got a rescue puppy we did, we did. Yeah. and um grace <laughs> says um i see the blessed virgin on the bureau is that who's that next to her and that would be from the um taking a knee, taking a knee. what's next to her is uh, the last doll my mother ever gave me um she it was a Betsy McCall doll and I was so angry with her I wanted a Barbie <laughs> <laughs> and mom her view was well you know Betsy McCall is an independent young woman and <laughs> Barbie's just handy and so think about you know if you really want a Barbie I'll get you Barbie but I think you're more like a Betsy McCall okay there's the painting that's okay. the painting yeah, and I say that doll. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so Marilyn says, um, Susan, can you explain what cradled hardwood is? Specifically, what species of hardwood and where, and where do you get these supplies? Art store, lumber yard, and the, these are phenomenal. Well, we both work in, on cradled hardwood. Mm -hmm. and um, Birch, birch well, plywood or? Um, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. It's just uh, birch, sometimes it's masonite, but it has a, a border that I use as a frame. I think the term cradled it means that there's a, ba like there's a pine strip backing on yeah. all four edges. That way you can kind of hang it on the wall, you know, yeah. it brings it off the wall. So it's not a flat piece of wood. Yes. So that, that's the cradle is in the back. Um, okay, uh, Joy, oh. Joy, yes. Um, Joy, my mom was in the Warsaw ghetto working in the underground. Oh, wow. Yeah, Joy's got, her family has crazy stories too. Um, so uh, Kathleen said, Kathleen Good says, um, something new to me in these paintings. Something, oh, sorry. Some, <laughs> something new to me in these paintings to me are beautiful. They're beautifully painted patterns on the floor, the cloth. I can feel her hands on that tablecloth. I agree. Um, David Brickman says, um, reminds me of Vermeer. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. We talk, we're talking about that when we were hanging the show. Mm -hmm. um, these solitary <laughs> figures, the light. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't that a nice compliment? That's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> um, a little bit, though, um, just tell everybody. So when I was in high school, I had uh, two painting classes a day um, and an art history class. So we, we learned to paint while we were learning art history. And so there's, I think when you're 15 and 16 years old and 17, that affects you. And so it, 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 it comes forth mm -hmm. in, in the sorts of ways that yeah. you, don't realize. So thank you for that comment. Yeah. I love Vermeer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Susan is a, um, a real student of art history, which you can see in, in her paintings for sure. Um, and then uh, Linda McRitchie Graff says, I love the foreshortening on this. We were talking about that when we were hanging the show as well. Yeah. Uh, your tricks on foreshortening. Um, 
So Sheila asks, uh, what is the symbolism, if any, of cropping headshots? I like it from a design point of view. Cropping headshots. I'm not sure which painting that might be about. Maybe Sheila could um, elaborate a little bit more on that. Hi, Susan. Uh, so, <laughs> you, hi. You often uh, have the figure, uh, the head is cropped at the top in a couple of, or the secondary figure's head. So it's cool from a shape point of view, but it's unusual. Yeah. You, we don't often do that. I wondered what the meaning was so for I have you. To think of each individual painting. Yeah, I'm trying to think, remember which. Oh, uh, yeah, the painting of your dad in particular. Oh, Marcel one. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, where his shoe, his shoe is just as prominent as his face. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think I'm going to answer your question, Sheila. I think. Um, uh, I can't in the painting of my dad, my idea was to create uh, some distance between um, the, the smallness of his head and mm -hmm. I, I took a, and his, how large his feet were. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to use the full height of the painting surface. I was thinking about showing, um, taking the view of how I saw him when I was a very young child. Oh. And, you know, close to the floor, you're often I was sitting on the floor looking up at him. Mm -hmm. And I just remembered, you know, how his body's, his legs seemed so long, his feet mm. seemed so long. Yeah. And then yeah. I also used foreshortening to, or, or end cropping to show that, um, you know, he was old and frail and that we were, our family was losing him. You know, mm -hmm. we knew mm -hmm. we were losing him. And mm -hmm. so I added the white light to, to show this sort of his transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, Thank you. Intentional. Yeah. 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 Um, Laura McGrew asks, um, did any of your subjects slash stories want to buy their paintings? <laughs> Sometimes mm -hmm. they do. Um, but what I do do is if, if someone poses, I have a, uh, I always, and they want, uh, you know, um, something I always give them a poster so I have a photographer his name is Barry Lovedal really great photographer <laughs> um, great and he he makes so I'm always giving away posters um, I, that's a, a good question because people are really just honored to you know have their story told and to receive the poster mm -hmm. and to know that I'm going to um, show th and tell their stories. Mm -hmm. Maybe when everything is, I, I don't know. I haven't really thought more about right. that, but no, pretty much people aren't interested in buying them. <laughs> That's okay. Well, art's a luxury item. So it is, um, it is. And I have another uh, a comment or a question. Um, Elaine Hanley, um, I love how you use your art as a form of social activism. Your work is very moving in the way you capture aspects of ordinary life and, and yet have your subjects involved in something greater than their individual lives. That was very well said, Elaine. I absolutely agree with that. Um, they're really, you know, people just in their life, in their house, in their room, in their living room, mm -hmm. our um, kitchen, and yet there's so much going on there. I have uh, Carol Ferris. Uh, what is your medium of choice? Do you apply apply with brushes and or palette knife? So I use bright brushes. They're short square brushes. I use very inexpensive brushes um, often in so and for paint I use uh, Georgian. Mm -hmm paint, sometimes gambling. Uh, is it relatively inexpensive paint? Um, I use heavy body paint. 
um, when when I was in graduate school, you know, my my professor said, now Susan, you know, you can paint a really beautiful painting with very inexpensive paint. And you could paint a really bad painting, you know, with very expensive paint. Mm -hmm. If you use inexpensive paint, you will be more open to um, experimenting. You won't feel so badly <laughs> right. when, when things are, aren't going well. <laughs> I can relate to that. That's, that's great. So that's, that's what I use. Yeah, and Anne Sutherland is a very similar question, um, which you just answered some of that, but she also asks, do you use a ground? I'm assuming she means like a gessoed ground or? Yeah, I just use, I use a, a gesso just so that um, I don't get uh, cradling or staining or right. those sorts of things, but just straight gesso. And uh, Virginia Conifer says, um, well done, Sue. Your paintings, of, your paintings of your subjects reflect their personalities. It's amazing. Also, I miss Bruce's breakfast with fresh fruit from your garden. <laughs> At my school, our seventh graders are reading and studying Anne Frank. So thank you for connecting with her thoughts and life, which are expressed in, in Kitty. Charles Watts says, uh, t uh, I'm seeing a combination of Edward Hopper and How Harold Weston. Who are your inspirations? Oh, that's a good one. To be honest, I, I don't really think about artists when I'm painting. Mm -hmm. My inspirations are the people. Mm -hmm. like, I just take, I try to take everything that I've learned and leave it. Yeah, at the studio door, and it's often after or while I'm working on a painting, I'll think, "Oh, this reminds me of this," or "Oh, that's yeah. really cool." That's great. And so I think that's really important to. I mean, you're obviously, you are influenced by people in throughout art history. I, I mean, you can see it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. Just go in the studio and paint and try not to think too much. And then you'll see it later, right? In, in much the same way a writer, you, you, when you're writing, it's this process that you're engaged with. It's transformative for you. Um, for me, it's a, painting is, is a kind of meditation. It's a spiritual practice. So I can't be thinking, you know, if, if I'm being present to myself in front of the... Um, the canvas in much the same way as a writer is present to their experiences with their what they're saying. Um, I just, um, I, I never was one much to try to make a painting in this person's voice or that person's voice. Um, it, it's a really good question. It's just something that I've never done. I, I know there's value um, in studying, you know, our other artists. And certainly Hopper was, um, and Weston are both artists that I adore. Right? Yeah. But um, it's, it's really my engagement with that person's story that right. person in front of me yeah. that is most yeah. important. Um, so um, Kathleen Good says, so much compassion and reverence in your paintings. Mm -hmm. And Leslie Walsh says, uh, the poster of our painting is behind Charles. Huh. Leslie and Charles uh, post. Can I, I find them in there? Oh, there. Hey, there it is. Nice. Leslie is the, the strong I, woman that we shouldn't be afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we didn't, I didn't have time to show all the paintings. Let me just show that real quick. Yeah that real quick i'm sorry i'm not the best at there we go oh, nope where is it give me a sec and there it is yeah i love this painting again the surface is so rich on this painting beautiful so i'm going to stop the share because i can't see the chat when i'm sharing <laughs> um and then uh, Claudia Michael says, uh, congratulations, Susan. This is a wonderful show. Oh, 
Aw, thanks, Clay. Uh -huh. So those are the, um, that's all the chat questions. And I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, this has been fantastic talking to you, Susan. I'm so honored mm -hmm. to have your work in the gallery. It's a fantastic show. And if anyone wants to see the show um, over the next couple of weeks, just give us a call. We'll make an appointment. Give us 20, at least 24 hour notice so we can plan ahead. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we will be back with um, regular ga gallery hours in February. But you'll find out if you just go to our website, we have everything posted there. Oh, wait, there's uh, new messages. One second. Oh, OK, it's just thank yous. Thank you, Susan. Um, thank you all so much for coming. Lots of thank you yous. My no. people. And you know, well, thank you took Susan. the time out of your busy <laughs> lives and COVID lives. It, yeah. it, it means so much to me. These works are beautiful. I wish I could come in person, but I'm in LA. That was from uh, June, I think. Um, thank you, Susan. Susan Portico Bauman, Carol Ferris, so wonderful. Connie Creek, congratulations. Um, let's see, uh, Tumblin, thank you. Margaret, amazing show. Susan, so glad to hear you talk about your work. So um, great commentary on, on these times from Laura McGrew. So um, it's been great talking to you, Susan. I'm gonna end this meeting now and hopefully um, you'll all make it to the Courthouse Gallery and also check out our website, lakegeorgearts.org and follow the links to get to Susan's page. Susan, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, take care. Thank you everybody for coming. All right, bye-bye.